Hi everyone, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. My name is Nick and welcome to yet another session of the digital marketing course. I just want to get across a quick confirmation in the chat window if you guys are able to hear me. All right, so Lucha, Anuj, Atanu, Mukul, Pratik, and Ramnik, are you guys able to hear me? Perfect, good morning, great. Thanks guys for acknowledging that you can hear me. I'm so sorry for the five, 10 minutes delay. There was some issue with the Zoom uh, meeting software. So I was just trying to troubleshoot that. And then, uh, un you know, fortunately, I have been able to log in. But unfortunately, it took me like a while, like five, 10 minutes. Nevertheless, so let's get started with today's session, guys. And uh, since you have confirmed that you can hear me loud and clear, so let's move further with uh, doing a recap as uh, usual. Whenever we start a session, we do a recap of what was being covered across in the previous session. I would request each one of you to do type in a class in the chat window the topics which you remember from the previous session, guys. All right, so Atharu says it was about sitemap, and Anuja said it was about sitemaps and robots, which we discussed last week. Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much. What else? <coughs> Atharu says robots.txt. Yes, absolutely, yes. And Mukul said it was about off page optimization as well. That is correct, Mukul. Thank you so much. What else? <clears throat> so, we request everyone to type in across the topics, guys, which you remember from the previous session. And then, moving forward, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take across your questions, your doubts, and so forth. All right, and Anud says off page optimization. Absolutely, yes. All right, so anybody else, anything else? Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and take across your questions, your queries, guys. Do type in across your questions, your queries your doubts so that I can go ahead and answer them respectively and then we'll move forward with today's session. So Ramnik says, could you please explain the application of sitemap and robots.txt on the website? Sure, I can go ahead and repeat that. If you'll see the recording, uh, Ramnik, you'll find that once again. Uh, I mean, you'll be able to find that because the application was being covered by me and uh, I understood the part, what it is. All right. And uh, this is, can you please describe about slug once again? Sure, I'll, I'll describe about slug as well. All right, you understood that part. So that part is the only application. So if you go onto a specific website, so let's say I'm going on to my, one of my website, I'm going into the WordPress panel in order to get across the sitemap enabled on your website, you would be able to do it with the help of SEO Yoast. All right, with the help of SEO Yoast. Have you guys tried doing that? So let me know if in case you faced any problem, any trouble uh, with regards to getting sitemap enabled on your website. It's just that it has to be enabled and it gets enabled with the help of the SEO Yoast plugin. So on the WordPress panel right now, now this is step number one. All right, I'm answering across questions and queries. So Ramnik, your question is first and then Anuja, I'm gonna take your question as well. In the WordPress panel, when you go in, you would need to go to the uh, SEO Yoast plugin. So the Yoast plugin, or right, so I haven't got the Yoast plugin right now set up for this website. I'm just going ahead and clicking on to add new, or maybe like I can go ahead and take across some other website as well. So SEO Yoast plugin was being installed by us, uh, way back earlier when we were doing on page optimization. Right, so I'm installing across SEO Yoast. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been, I've clicked on install and I'm clicking on to activate. All right. Now I've activated it. Now on the left hand side, this SEO Yoast plugin 
is going to appear. Here you can see, all right. Now, as you can see, the very first time when you're going to install a cross SEOs plugin, it is not going to give across all the options, so all the various functionalities. And the functionality which is missing right now is the sitemap functionality only. In order to get that functionality, I have to go to the main dashboard of SEO Yoast. So this is the SEO Yoast plugin. I'm going into the dashboard section. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now in the dashboard, I'll be now moving on to general tab. After clicking on the general, I'm clicking on to open the configuration wizard. I have to go ahead and configure Yoast SEO with my website. Okay. <clears throat> now I've got two options either to configure across myself or to ask across the Yoast guy to configure it for me. I'm clicking on to configure SEO Yoast myself. Okay. Now it's asking me, please specify the, uh, the stage in which your website is right now. So I can say that, uh, this is right now a live site with real tra traffic. All right. Now you can choose any of those hardly matters. They're not really concerned with that, whichever one you choose. Now it's asking me what sort of a website is this? Now this is configuration of the Yoast SEO. That's very much important to be done in order to get across all the functionalities of Yoast SEO to be enabled. Now it's asking what kind of site is this? I can mention that it's a small or my, it's my personal site. Now again, hardly matters whatever option you use. I mean, if for, every, for each one of our website, it's going to be different, right? And it says this data is shown as no company or best person. What sort of uh, website is this? I'm clicking on to person and I'm giving across the name. <clears throat> oh my goodness. It's asking me a lot of stuff. I choose to ignore this right now. I'm clicking on to next. Let's see whether it's let me pass by or not. It does. And now it's asking me, uh, do you want to show all the pages on your website, the post pages, media as in the images and all that section, the layout, events portfolio. And I say, yes, I want all of this to be visible. When I say visible, it means very much that the search engines are able to, the search engines are able to, uh, you know, see that across easily or not. So I'm, I have opted in for visible. I'm clicking on to next again. And uh, now it says does or will your site have multiple authors? I go in and say yes. Multiple author means that not just uh, one person is going to go ahead and contribute content for this website. Will there be many other authors who will contribute content for this website? And I'm, I'm uh, writing in yes. I know we haven't covered this part earlier because the uh, previous site on which SEO Yoast I have shown you, there the Yoast SEO was configured already, right? This is a new website which I'm actually taken. That's why it's happening right now, like this. Now it says uh, to allow Yoast SEO to fetch your Google search console uh, information, please enter, enter your Google authorization code. Now I'll, I'll tell you what exactly Google search console is, guys. Google search console is one of Google's product, like the way Google has got various products. Google, Google has got Google search engine, Google AdWords, Google Maps, Google Drive, and so forth. Similarly, Google search console is another product which is primarily made for the search engine optimizers, or you can say the website owners basically. So today, if I have a website of my own, I can go ahead and configure my website with Google search console or the other name given to Google search console. There are, there are two names given to it. It's called Google webmasters. All right. Which I'm going to go ahead and teach you as well. This is a one, one of the great products which Google offers and we as search engine optimizers needs to understand what sort of stuff does it help uh, the SEO people, the website owners basically. And how can we really leverage uh, the benefit? How can we really benefit out of this product? Okay. So we would be going ahead and configuring the last step is to go ahead and configure across our website with uh, Google Webmaster or Google Search Console. These are the two names given across to same product.
Now, wherever somebody says Google Search Console or Google Webmaster, you should not get confused. I'm repeating again, this is a product. One more product by Google, which is primarily made for the website owners. And uh, the website owners are able to take benefit out of this product in, uh, from the SEO perspective. Google gives a lot of recommendations and suggestions with regards to SEO for every website. And those suggestions and recommendations are provided within the panel of Google search and so on. All right. So I'm going ahead and clicking on to get Google authorization code. It's asking me for a Google username and password. My Gmail username and password. I can go ahead and type that across. All right. I'm clicking on to next and <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, this is the entire code guys. This one, I have to copy this. This is the code which it's been asking for. All right, strange. It's I'm entering the authorization code right over here and then clicking on to authenticate. So the code that came in over here, I copied it and then I'm pasting it back over here. It says select a profile, the name of the website. All right. So I have to enter the website name as well into Google webmaster, which I haven't done yet. I'm doing it right now. The website for which I'm doing it right now, guys, is digital hyphen marketing hyphen coaching.com. All right. So I'm going on to my Google webmaster and I'm adding the name of the website. All right. Let, let me just go back and show you one more thing, which I did mention a while back, Google webmaster or Google search console. These I mean, it's one and the same thing. I'm repeating again, Google search console and Google webmaster. And like I said, it's a product by Google. It helps you to, it helps the website owners to go ahead and uh, do a lot of, uh, you know, <clears throat> changes to the website from the search engine optimization perspective to improve the SEO basically. As you can see, Google webmaster says, you want to be found on the web, we want to help. So Google wants to help the website owners. It also says track your site's search performance. So what all people are really searching for and is your website coming for, uh, coming for your targeted keywords or not? That's what uh, this Google webmaster is going to tell you. It says with, uh, you're going to track the performance of Google search console and browse around for more website resources. In case uh, you get across uh, time guys, you can anytime go ahead and click onto their learn section and then uh, read more about what exactly search console or web webmaster does. Uh, I'll also be going ahead and showing you the major uh, pointers within search console, which you need to be aware of and so forth. All right. It says get support for your site, learn to make great sites and so forth and stay connected and updated. All right. I hope I've given you a, glimpse of what exactly Google Webmaster does. I'm uh, going in and logging into Google Webmaster with the help of my same Gmail credential, which I used for just a while back to get Google Yoast configured. I'm clicking on to add a property and over here, I am going ahead and mentioning across the website URL, the website URL for which we are configuring Yoast SEO and once Yoast SEO would be configured in full, then only we'll have the sitemap feature enabled. All right. So the website name is this. I've copied it and I'm pasting it right up over here and clicking on to add. All right. So it's been already added guys. See, why it got added so quickly because earlier the authentication code was being entered by me had not been the process or as it says, please check your email for a message with next steps. That's something which we can do later on. 
So if the Yoast SEO authentication process would not have been done, then this uh, your uh, the process of adding your website to Google Webmaster could have been a bit longer. That process will, uh, will also be shown by me later on. And I'll talk about these things later on also, that what exactly it is all about and so forth, okay? And I'm going back to your SEO again and clicking on to next. Okay, now, it's asking me to go ahead and mention my website name, the title tag and so forth. You guys are pretty much aware of what the title tag is. I'm not going ahead and, uh, uh, you know, configuring, I mean, putting across a title tag right now, whatever I have, it's absolutely fine. So the title tag is already there in place and it says, uh, do you really want to get across newsletter from Yoast SEO? So Yoast SEO, they have their own newsletter, which they send across on regular basis. Title separator, what it means. So there were quite a many Pratik, even the pipe symbol was there. So I didn't use any of those uh, title separator. The one which is recommended as you are already aware, the title separator is the pipe symbol. So they, they didn't just give the hash symbol. There were uh, 15, 16 options which were there. So they hardly made any uh, sense. The only one was the pipe symbol. All right, now this is the last step. It's asking me to go ahead and upgrade to a premium version, which I don't want to do that. So I'm clicking on to next again. And it says you have done it. I'm going ahead and clicking on to close. Let's see. Now, after configuring it, do we get the option of, uh, what do you say, sitemap? So I'm, I'm going back to general section once again. Let me see where would I get that. All right, so features. <coughs> now underneath features, after the configuration has been done, we would go to the features section and then click on to enabling the advanced settings. The moment I'm, done, I'm clicking on to advanced, now the search sitemap option will come for sure. <coughs> Excuse me guys. All right, now can you see the sitemap feature has appeared? So what all we had to do in order to get across the sitemap enabled for our website, we had to make sure that the SEO Yoast plugin is installed on our website. And after its installation, it's already also being configured. So the moment it's, it got configured, right, we were, uh, able to get across the XML sitemap option. Also, we after configuring, we had to make sure that the advanced settings get enabled. And for that, we went to the Features tab and then clicked on to Enabling the Advanced Settings page. Now the XML sitemap section is right up over here. I'm clicking over here. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Having a tough time with my throat infection. All right, now you can see it says by default, your XML sitemap has been enabled and that's what we really want. We want the XML sitemap to be enabled. And if in case you want any specific page of your website to be not to be part of the XML sitemap, you can go ahead and click on the post types and sorry, uh, excluded post and then mention the name of the page which you want to exclude. Now, how can I see whether the XML sitemap has been enabled or not, but it will take some time for it to get enabled. That is for sure. But I'm letting you know, all you have to do is go to a new tab and then type in your website name. So your website name by default forward slash sitemap.xml. Now this is how you really enable it and then see. Let's see whether it has got, uh, as of now it says page not found because we have just enabled it, right? We have enabled it uh, like two minutes back and so forth. It'll take some time to get it enabled. Maybe after 24 to 48 hours, there would be sitemap created across. Like for a different website of mine, if I have to show you the sitemap, I'll go ahead and type in across the name of the website, forward slash 
sitemap.xml. I think the other day we saw it for Anuja's website also. Now this is how the sitemaps are, have been enabled and they have been enabled by Yoast SEO. Now what it is, why it is used, what is the purpose behind using that across, all that was being covered across also in the previous uh, session. I hope you recall that. So this is about XML sitemap. Uh, does it answer your question, uh, Ramnik? Let me know. The other question was with regards to robots.txt. So let me know if uh, there's any question or any query with regards to sitemap.xml. So it is absolutely needed that you go ahead and do it from your side as well. All right, guys, you do have an option to go ahead and, uh, you know, record this entire session at your end also. So you can, you can do that. So I know just doing it or each one of you want to go ahead and record it at your end. You can do that. So you will, you'll get across, uh, what do you say, an option in the more, so if you'll go ahead and just click right, uh, right next to your name. So within the panel itself, you'll, since I made each one of you a panelist, each one of you are a panelist, right? So you can go ahead and record this session. So Anuja has also started, Anuj is also recording. Each one of you want to go ahead and record it at your end, you can do that. All right, Pratik also started that. Mokul Atanu, if in case, Sauvay Kramnik, if in case you want to go ahead and record the session at your end. All right, Mukul has also started. Do you guys want to go ahead and record across uh, each one of you? All right, Sauvay, you also started. Atanu and Ramnik. In case you want to go ahead and record at your end, you can surely do that. Okay. How can I change the URL on my site? All right, I'm just URL. Uh, all right, so slug part I have to configure. So, Ramnik, just try to check if you have already uh, understood that part, the sitemap, so then I can move further. All right, you've understood. Perfect. I'll, I'll talk about robots also. Also, uh, Atanu and Ramnik, you can also record the session if in case you wish to just on the right hand side of your name in the panel itself, you can click on to record the session. You know, that will save you time in terms of uh, waiting for the recording to come over, which you usually get like on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and so forth, I believe so, or maybe Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Atanu, in the panel itself for the Zoom, in the Zoom meeting panel, you'll get the option of uh, recording the session. So everybody is recording right now, except for Ramnik and Atanu, uh, it's right, both of you. So you can go ahead and record the session. Pratik says there is a button record in the panel, in the bottom of your screen. All right, thanks Pratik and thank you, Sovik. All right, perfect. All right. All right. So it would be so once the session will get uh, done, it will get saved in your documents or your download folder somewhere. So you'll you'll get that automatically when the session will get uh, ended. All right. Now to answer across the second uh, question, which is how to implement across robots.txt that was being explained in detail. I'm going to be quick on that for robots.txt to be Enabled on our website, we have to go to the plugin section again and click on to add new. And this time again, it's going to be uh, robots. This time it's going to be a plugin again, which will be used for implementation of robots.txt. I entered robots.txt in the keyword section. All right, so this is the plugin which I usually use. All right, it's called virtualrobots.txt. This is, this is the one which I have shown last time, right? Or I hope everybody remembers that. So you can go ahead and install this plugin. 
by the name of virtualrobots.txt. Just click on to install now. And then click on to activate. All right, so I've got the plugin being installed, guys, which is the robots.txt. All right. Now I'm just going to the settings section. In the settings tab, underneath the settings tab, the virtual robots.txt has got installed. I'm clicking right up over here. And uh, this is the section where you can go ahead and put in across the robots.txt uh, command. The commands uh, which you want to be pasted across in the robots.txt file that needs to be pasted right up over here. And where will you get this command from? With the help of certain robots.txt creator. All right, so the robots.txt creator or generator, the last, the tool which I have shown last time is this one. Right, and I've explained this in detail last time that whichever page you do want to be uh, crawled and indexed, you can, uh, you don't need to mention that. Only those pages which you do not want to be crawled and indexed, you will mention right up over here, click on to add, and the entire command which would be go, which will go underneath robots.txt, which will go in there, robots.txt file will be right up over here. You'll copy that and then paste it back in this section of your website. And then you will go ahead and click on to save changes. Right, so that's how you get across your robots.txt enabled. Now this was a quick one. You can go ahead and uh, uh, use, uh, look into the previous session, right, to get across more, more details on it. Pratik says, suppose we exclude a particular page in robots, can we add it again further? Yes, you can absolutely. You can change this uh, part as many times as you want, Pratik. So in the morning, let's say you decide to include it and in the evening you want it to want it back, you can do that. All right, so that's the answer to your question. Now, the other question is with regards to changing the URL. So I'm opening across and on also the slug, right? So I'm opening across my website, one of my another WordPress based website. I'm going into the WordPress panel in order to answer this question. All right, so it's getting logged in. All right, so here's the WordPress panel guys of one of my other website. Now over here, what can be done is, I'm just picking and choosing one specific page. And for that particular page, I'll show you how can the URL be changed. So I'm going on to my post section, all my blog post page. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and open across one of the pages. All right, so I've just clicked on to edit and this is the page for which I'll be uh, showing, uh, I'll be showcasing how can I change the slug or the URL. Slug or URL means the same. I can either go ahead and change it right from uh, here by clicking on to edit, all right? Whatever I want, I can put it right up over here and then click on to okay. It's as simple as that. And so it says readability important. Uh, it is important, but on the lower side, when I say lower side, I mean the, uh, what do you say? The, what do you call that? The prior, from, the, from the priority point of view, it's very much on the lower side. So the priority is lower. If you, if you get across time and get across readability also to be on the, uh, to be, to be fixed in sure, surely go ahead and do that. 
but uh, the SEO part is something which is to, which has to be given across the maximum importance and uh, the major priority, I would say. Right. So it is important, but on the lower side. All right. So I'm going further down in the SEO Yoast plugin section. I can I would go ahead and click on to edit snippet. The moment I click on to edit snippet, the slug part either I can go ahead and change it right from over here, or maybe on the top. I don't remember whose question was that. Let me know if in case you have, you have got the answer to your question. If you have a follow up question, if you're not getting this section on your website, you can let me know. I can log into your website and show it across. Whose question was that? Mm. All right, so Anuj and uh, Anuja. Slug and the, all right. So, uh, sure, Anuj, I'll just log into you. So, Anuj, if in case you're not getting for your website, can you just go ahead and configure Yoast SEO first, then it will come for you. Right, and give me the WordPress credential. So, work of the slug, basically, Anuj, is from the SEO point of view only, as we started that you have to have search engine friendly URL, right? Search engine friendly URL. Uh, that's, that's the role basically in order to go ahead and optimize your page further, you need to make sure that your URL for all of your pages are search engine friendly. And how do you really make them search engine friendly by ensuring that there is no special character in the URL and, uh, the space between two different words has been uh, depicted with the help of an hyphen. That's number two. And number three, make sure that the focus keyword is part of the slug. That's what, Anuja, if you recall that, let me know if in case you are good or you need, uh, in case you've got the answer to your question. All right, so I'm just logging into Anuj's website. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other question, any other query guys from the previous session, feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. And then we'll go further with today's session. All right. So I know this is your website, but well, I have logged into your website. Let me know uh, what exactly I, I can help you with. All right, so you're not getting that slug option right now over here. It's right up over here. So you can change it. I think you did something with change permalinks. So we are pretty much stuck with your website. Let me know what exactly it is. Right, so it's, uh, let me know when exactly uh, you need help with regards to your website. I'm pretty much stuck with my website. The theme I'm using is difficult. I, I gave you guys the option of going ahead and choosing across a premium theme from this particular website called themeify.me. So are you part of the, that WhatsApp group where everybody is there? In the, webs, in the WhatsApp group, I mentioned this, that in case, uh, you want a premium WordPress theme, I can offer it to you for free. You can go to this website called themeify.me and you can look at all the themes which are right up over here. Just go to the themes section and click on to all themes. All right. So these premium themes will not give you that much tough time. Now let's say, uh, now these are the these are various uh, premium themes which are available. You can pick and choose any one of these, I will go ahead and give it to you once you let me know. 
all you would have to do is you have, you would have to give me your wordpress credentials and i'll go ahead and upload that upload that for you each theme costs somewhere close to 59 60 dollars and so forth i can give it to you uh, just like that i've got the paid version for this so let's say you know this ultra theme the way you're going to go ahead and look into the preview for this just click on to the theme first and then click on to demo the moment you're going to click on to demo every theme has got multiple uh, sub themes also so these are the sub themes underneath the uh, underneath the ultra theme which was one of the major themes these are the sub categorized themes underneath the ultra theme so let's say you're looking for a lawyer e-commerce spa related restaurant related an agency wedding fitness you know these are various different layouts which are there let's say you were looking for a restaurant related website you can click on to this have a look into it let me know if in case you like any of these themes i'll go ahead and upload that so this is how your website is really going to look like it will have the dummy content the demo the, the dummy content and so forth all your uh, so it would be very easy for you to go ahead and just edit the existing content and put uh, put this across into action so i'm giving you the link once again guys it's called themeify.me so whoever wants a paid theme can let me know by just going on to themeify.me select the website select the theme which you want let me know on whatsapp i'll go ahead and get it enabled for you all right so now uh, anuj for your website the permalink structure clicking on to save changes all right one second there's something which you have i think done for your website for permalink all right so i think you did something uh by yourself i know that's why the settings are not getting changed for this promo link right i i can see there's something wrong over here with regards to your promo link but just try doing this with the help of the slug option it says page id one second either your theme has this section so i'm just i'm just trying to change across your slug for one of your page let's see whether that gets done or not no it doesn't so anuj it's not letting us to go ahead and change it to custom structure what is this buddy press thing which you have installed that is really not letting it do or so we can just going to go and read your chat in a second so now let's see uh other jeff your website 
is going to enable changing across. All right, can you see now it's been done? It's been configured. All right, so now you can do that. Anuj, your slug can be changed now. It's been troubleshoot. Perfect. Okay, my pleasure. All right, so the another question is Sovic. So it says, yes, but my problem is I'm not being able to change the theme. As I had installed a theme called Sydney, then tried changing. Theme got changed, but there were parts of St Sydney still on the website. I deleted Sydney, but still, I guess I had installed the Sydney plugin, and now I can't find the plugins to uninstall. All right, so we, uh, we can discuss this offline. What you can do is you can uh, send me across your WordPress credential on uh, WhatsApp later on, and I'll, I'll help you to get that thing sorted out. All right, so let's move further with today's session. Uh, the other topics, we covered the sitemap in the robots.txt part. We covered the off page, right? So, okay, Anuja says, uh, what do you write in slug? Will it be focus keyword or main topic? It's going to be slug. Oh, sorry, it's going to be focus keyword, Anuja. That's the answer. And you said, I got user agent uh, asterisk and disallow while generating robots. This is fine. Yes, this is fine. Absolutely. All you have to do is you just have to copy that and then put that in place. All right. So I think you did ask me this question earlier also. I'm so sorry if I uh, didn't see it. All right. So I've shared this document with everyone. I believe uh, Ramnik, it's not been shared with you. I'll go ahead and send, send this across this updated document with everyone. Uh, one second. I'll just go ahead and take down the details. All right, sure. I'll just go ahead and make sure that each one of you did that. All right, so you also started, I think, joining in, uh, in the mid of this patch. Got a problem, I'll go ahead and make sure that everybody gets that. So, okay, this is not the Excel sheet. One second. All right, so Ramnik, your, your email address is there. And so, <laughs> it's absolutely okay. Your late number is absolutely fine. Uh, all right, so Sovic, this has been shared with you for sure. With Ramnik, I can understand, yes, Ramnik hasn't got that. All right, I'll, I'll still go ahead and share that once again. All you guys just, uh, you must be absent that day, all right. So, just, just remind me on, on Monday on WhatsApp, I'll go ahead and share that. Or maybe within this, in today's, let me just go ahead and do it right away. Otherwise, I'll forget it. Give me one second. I'll share it with everyone. All right, Anuja, I have received your email. With regards to meta tags, thank you so much. Let me just see on Zoom if there is an option of sending a file from here. Not really. All right, so I think there's no feature to send in across. All right, so I can send it across on Monday. One second. I, I'm sure that I'm going to get busy with my other stuff, so that's why I do want to make sure that each one of you get that right away. So it's only Sovig and it's only Ramnik who haven't received it. Just give me one more second, guys, and then we'll start. So. Just, just help me to uh, recall was off, what all did we covered in off page? All right, so I'll, I'll take it right. 
So what all do you remember about off-page optimization, guys? The backlink, yes. Well, so the different name which is given across to, uh, what do you say, off-page optimization is called backlinking. And it just says off-page is all about to create backlinks. That is correct. It's also called link building. That is correct. What else? So it says getting your website, linking in another website. And how do you really get that done? So now the next question is, how do you really get that done? By collaborating. So it says, and Anuj says, creation of inbound links. Absolutely, yes. That's what we... Uh, so this is all about, uh, what, do we, what do we say? It's all about networking along with several people who have got websites in the same industry as yours, right? And either having a barter system with them, convincing them to go ahead and, uh, you know, put in across content on their website. And from that content, they can go ahead and place across a backlink to your website. I would say it's a mutual contribution. You need to provide content or link to another website and get theirs. Absolutely. So there's nothing technical with off page. It's purely all about uh, going ahead and uh, uh, getting into conversation and seeing what the other person is really looking for. Right. And uh, if the other person files, finds your offer to be appealing, then definitely they'll go ahead and uh, get you give you across a backlink. All right, so I've got most of the documents which I have shared up till now. All right, so once they, they'll get uploaded and then I'll send it across. Anyone else who needs these documents once again can let me know so that I can go ahead and send them once again. Or shall I sh send it across to everyone once again? All right, I know you need them. All right, so everybody needs them. Perfect. So that's great. I'll, I'll go ahead and send it across to everyone. And I'm going to let you know who, else, who all have received it. Sure, Mukul, I'll just go ahead and send it to you as well. So is this the one? Mukul Mahajan 90 at gmail.com? Yes, I think so. And then it's Pratik. All right, so anyone who's missing over here, I am sending it to Ramnik to whose email address is this? I think it's Sovik, Anuj, Anuja, Sandeep, Atanu, Mukul, and Pratik. Anyone who's missing right up over here can let me know. Uh, or I think it, it includes everyone. All right, so the document is getting uploaded. It will take some while and the moment it'll get uploaded, I'll, I'll just click onto the send button. All right. So I did show you the off page, uh, the backlink checker tool, the Moz backlink checker tool through which we can get to know we didn't. All right. So I'll just show you. So there, here's a tool guys through which we can get to know which all websites are giving us a backlink. Not just for our website, we can check this. We can check it for our competitor's website as well. All right. And that works the best. If you are not able to achieve, let's say, you know, the topmost position for the keywords which you have opted in for, all you have to do is you have to see which is that website that is achieving the topmost position. Now, 
the website which has achieved the topmost position definitely it would have done something great because of which it is ranking on the top and what is that great thing either it would be from the on page optimization point of view or maybe from the off page so on page we have covered in detail the same thing the things which we have seen uh, which we have learned with regards to on page you have to see on that particular website which is ranking on the top that what exactly they are doing the the way they have configured their tags and so forth you have to look into that and see where exactly is your website lacking from that perspective that's number 1 from the off page point of view you can find out what is that what are those websites from which your competitors website is getting backlinks because of which it is ranking on the top and this is a tool through which you can really get to know so let's say uh i'm taking an example i'm taking example of let's say amazon amazon is one of the great e-commerce website and the other one is flipkart so they are close competitor to each other as we all know all right so flipkart is uh only only operates across in the indian market and amazon is there global globally right but if i just consider in the indian market for most of the keywords let's say which for which uh, flipkart is trying to get themselves on the top amazon is uh, also very much there so if in case flipkart wants to beat amazon what it will do flipkart will go in and take the url of its competitor which is amazon will go to a backlink checker tool like moz.com forward slash research tools forward slash ose ose stands for open site explorer that's the name open site explorer so flipkart what will do it will type in the name type in the url of amazon.in just because it's uh, their competitor and then we'll click on to search all right now after clicking on to search flipkart will get to know that amazon is getting backlinks from all of these websites now flipkart will also try to aim for getting across backlinks from all of these websites in order to you know be on at least on the same page now this site is uh, actually free for two or three searches in a day if you try to do this search thing more than three times in a day then you would have to pay for it so as of now it's it's free all right as you can see the paid version will uh, will allow you to do run across this report unlimited times but if it's a it's a free version it will just allow you two to three times that's it now if i'll go ahead and click on to one of these links guys what you will see on these links amazon is getting across a backlink i'm just opening across uh, two to three links which have been mentioned right up over here so this is one of the backlink guys this is one of the website which is giving a backlink to amazon or i would have to check where is the backlink really coming in from all right so somewhere or the other a backlink to amazon would be there all right so uh, it's not that easy to actually find out the backlink but somewhere or the other there would be a backlink guys the other url i'm going on to the other urls so let's say on this one there would be link going back to amazon somewhere or the other i can just go ahead and do command f or control f all right and then type in amazon all right so as you can see it's Amazon is right up over here. The moment I'm going to click onto this, either Amazon would open up from here, 
or from somewhere else. All right, so I think this one, this is a backlink. So can you see on techmimi.com, there's a backlink which is going to Amazon, right? So Amazon is getting a backlink from here. So Flipkart will also aim for this. Flipkart is also gonna aim for getting across a backlink from techmimi.com. Makes sense, let me know if in case any questions, any queries, any doubts guys, so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. All right, so Anuja says, all backlink will be, uh, all backlink will be visible on pages. Uh, yes, sometimes you would have, you, you will have a hard time uh, to find that across, but uh, in most of the scenarios, you will find them easily. You can see all of them. You can see all of them. In certain instances, uh, you know, it might be difficult to see where is the backlink like, like on this one, the backlink is there for sure, but I'm not able to find it so easily. I'm, I'm scrolling from top to bottom and uh, it's not that easy to find the Amazon backlink. But one thing I'm sure that the backlink is there because moz.com has reported that this backlink checker tool has reported so many backlinks. Now, how many backlinks Amazon has received up till now? Oh my goodness, can you see? It's uh, 147,000 total backlinks, guys. That's quite a massive one. Like checking Amazon's backlink, right? So that's what we have done. So Amazon's backlink is 147,000. You can check it for various other uh, websites also. And Pradeek says Amazon will not, be, will not be able to know about this. Then what about Flipkart may be doing? Yes, and it's vice versa. So anybody can check anybody's uh, backlink like this. It's an open forum. So if Flipkart is checking for Amazon, Amazon will get will not get to know. And if Amazon is getting it, uh, get, uh, you know, finding it across from Flipkart, the backlinks then Flipkart will not get to know. So it's like that. And so it says our backlinks all like newspaper ads, as in better the offer, better the visibility uh, to a certain extent. But uh, it's just that the uh, there's no, nothing as such as offer over here. It's just that the link placement thing is there, Sovic. So if you are able to get across a backing from a, a great renowned website in whichever fashion, whether it's a link on the top of the page or link on the bottom of the page, uh, hardly matters. It's just that it has to be a backlink within the content. So whether the content which has, uh, which is giving across a backlink has an offer or doesn't have an offer. Or it's just a plain piece of uh, written content hardly matters, right? It's just that a link has to be there on a third party website, which is pointing back to your website. That's what another thing is over here is that the backlink, which you want to get across from websites should be related to your industry and should have good page authority and domain authority. I'm going to talk about that. So the websites from which, from which you are going to invite across backlinks or you're going to get across backlinks, you would need to check for the page authority and domain authority for that particular uh, page from where you're going to get across backlink. Domain authority and page authority, like for Amazon, it's been uh, depicted across by Moz tool right up over here. Now, what is this domain authority and page authority? Let me tell you. Page authority and domain authority are scores given across by this organization called Moz. Now Moz are the pioneers. Moz.com is an organization which are which is a pioneer in search engine optimization industry. And uh, Moz gives across domain authority and page authority to every single domain and every single page. Okay. And it's calculated on a scale of zero to hundred. Zero being the least and hundred being the highest. Now on what factors this score is given across and what is a good score and what is a bad score? Zero being the least and hundred being the highest. So if you're closer, your website, uh, domain, your website, uh, any particular page URL has got a, a domain authority and page authority closer to zero, better it is. And uh, if it's uh, not so, if it's closer towards zero and so forth, it's, it's bad Then it needs certain improvement. Now, the way through which domain authority and page authority gets improved across is 
uh, the same things which we have covered so far, the on-page and the off-page optimization part. If you are able to get across backlinks for your website from uh, several, <coughs> excuse me, from several websites, from several related websites, plus if you are able to do a good amount of on-page optimization for your website, your domain 30 and page 30 will keep improving. Good content, good tagging, sitemap.xml, robots.txt, search engine friendly URL, putting across all tags, putting across title tag, meta tag, description, meta, tag, meta keywords, uh, putting across focus keywords and URLs, all of those things which we have understood so far. If you go ahead and keep implementing them and put, and, in, and if you go ahead and keep on embedding more content, right, it will always help you to get domain authority and page, higher page authority. Now, if your website domain 14 page authority will keep on improving, you will also get across offers from various other websites to give backlink to them. Right? So when you are there in the market and uh, in the, in the internet market, basically, and you are hunting for backlinks, you will always look for those websites, which will have a good considerable domain authority and page authority to get across backlinks. Now, what is the definition of good considerable? I would say 40, 50, 60 is a ballpark figure. That should be, uh, that is a decent, uh, anything more than 50, 60 is a decent domain authority and page authority. Now the difference between these two domain authority and page authority, go well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and read out the chats in a while. I'm just explaining these things. Uh, I'll surely go ahead and answer that across also your questions. Domain authority is a score, which is given to the entire domain. So Amazon.in, uh, as a homepage has got a page authority of 82 and the entire domain has a page authority of 78. Now, whether it's amazon.in forward slash about us page, the contact us page or any other internal page, all of the internal pages will ha also have the same domain authority because this is an, this is a score, which is given to the entire domain. So if Amazon has got, let's say one lakh pages, all right or a hundred thousand pages, whatever you want to call that in, in national or international numbering system, all those one lakh pages, they all will have the same domain authority because they are on the Amazon domain only. But all these one lakh pages will have their own individual page authority. Every individual page has got its own score. And I'm repeating again, the score over here is on a scale of zero to hundred, zero being the least and hundred being the highest. And anything above 40, 50, 60 is a good considerable, I would say, for domain 30 and page 30 score. And the way you go ahead and improve that across is by doing the same set of tasks, uh, the SEO task, which I'm talking about, the on-page and the off-page. And another thing which I would like to tell you that, uh, all right, so I've already mentioned that the difference between domain 30 and page 30. Okay, I'm not going to go in and read out the chat now and you can let me know whatever queries, whatever questions you have. Pradeek says like checking Amazon's backlinks, that's why, that's why it's Amazon's great. Yes, absolutely. Amazon has got so many backlinks, that's why it's great. And Pradeek says can hyperlink also help in improving our SEO if we clear hyperlinks. See hyperlinking is done in two ways, either by connecting one page of your website with the other page, that's internal linking Pradeek or by having a hyperlink on someone else's website and which is pointing to your website. And that's, that's the same thing, which is backlinking only. What is hyperlinking? Hyperlinking is they're putting across a link on a particular text. Now that text could be on your website and it's uh, leading to another page of your website only, which is called internal linking. What are we doing over here in backlinking? We are hyperlinking a particular text on someone else's website. In that example of techmimi.com, what has happened? There is this text called Amazon.in. As you can see, the moment I'm taking the cursor, the mouse cursor on this particular text, which is Amazon.in, it's, it's been hyperlinked. It's been hyperlinked. That's why the cursor actually moved to a different uh, form and fashion, right? The moment I'm going to go ahead and click onto this, it's going to be Amazon website. So this text, which is hyperlinked, so Amazon.in text was being hyperlinked. The moment I clicked onto it, I jumped from tech mini to Amazon.in. So there was a backlink basically 
and backlink gets done only with the help of hyperlinking only. All right, and I'm just can you please repeat again the difference between domain authority and page authority? Sure, absolutely, I'll do that. So, Anuja, what happens is domain authority is a score which is common for all the pages of the website. So, Amazon.in, I'm assuming, let's say it has got one lakh internal pages. So, one of the pages, let's say Amazon.in forward slash about us page, then the second page is the contact us page. The third page and fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the pages. Now the other pages are the product pages, the you know, and so forth. So let's say there are so many products. We all know that e-commerce websites have got multiple thousands and lakhs of uh, you know products. That's why every product has got a, got a page of its own, uh, a web page of its own, right? So we are, I'm giving an example. I'm assuming that there are one lakh web, web pages on Amazon dot in main website. Now all the one lakh web pages, internal web pages of uh, Amazon dot in, they all will have the same domain authority. So if it's 78 out of 100, so this score, domain authority score will be same for the other internal pages too. Whether it's the Amazon about us page, whether it's the Amazon contact us page, whether it's the Amazon, let's say the mobile phone category page, or the Amazon, let's say iPhone six page, I'm taking example. So all the internal pages of Amazon will have the same domain authority because this is a score given to the entire domain. Now, whereas the page authority score, if we talk about, excuse me, the page authority score is going to be different across on all the internal pages, all the internal pages. All right. Every page of Amazon will have its own respective score. This will change from page to page. Now the about us page could be could be having across a page authority of let's say 80. The home page has got a page authority of 82. The contact us page will have a page authority might let's say maybe 92, right? But the domain authority of about us page, contact us page, and all the internal pages will remain same, which is 78. You got that perfect. Pratik says, how is this score calculated? Means what parameters have been taken into consideration for domain and page? All right, I did mention this. Three times, Pratik, I'm repeating it again, if you uh, heard me correctly. All the uh, SEO factors which we have learned up till now, they play a vital role in improving across the domain authority and page authority. The on-page and the off-page factors. If we keep on improving the on-page and the off-page activities for our website, our domain authority and page authority for our website and for the other internal pages of our website will improve. All right. So if I am using across all those great, uh, uh, you know, on page tags and placing them across perfectly, the title tag, the meta tag description, the meta keywords, the usage of header tags, usage of all tag. And I'm going ahead and putting all of those things in uh, proper shape and manner. What's going to happen. I'm going to have, uh, improvement in the domain authority and page authority both. That's the way you go ahead and improve across domain authority and page authority. You can definitely go ahead and uh, read more about it onto Google. And I'm saying it again, this is the score which is given only by Moz. And this is used primarily in a scenario when we have an option of selecting across, getting across backlink from let's say two different websites. And I'm saying it again, assume that uh, we have been given across an opportunity. We have been given across an, uh, uh, we as a website owner. So I, if I have my own website, which is, or I have, let me take example of Amazon only. Amazon can get into a situation where it's been provided across an opportunity to get across a backlink either from techmimi.com or maybe let's say PC world. So, you know, it might have, it, it can certain, certain scenarios, it does happen. Now how Amazon will actually make a decision whether it should get across a backlink. It, it should choose either PC world or tech Mimi since it has got an option, right? And it, ha they have to decide and pick and choose only one out of these two. What Google, what Amazon will do, it will go ahead and use across the Moz toolbar and check the domain authority and page authority for both these websites for which it has got an option of getting backlinks. 
the website which will have a higher domain authority and page authority, Amazon will go in and pick and choose that particular website to get across a backlink. So always try to pick and choose those websites to get across a backlink which has got a higher domain authority and page authority, provided you have a choice. There would be scenarios in the initial uh, days when you will be when you will be optimizing your website when you will not have any thing to choose from. You will be just going ahead and approaching website owners to get across backlink. You might not have a lot of choices. The choices part comes in at a later stage when you are pretty much famous, right? Your website is pretty much famous, and uh, uh, people do give you. Uh, when everybody is ready to give you across backlinks, then you have limited space or you, you just want backlink from any, uh, I mean, selected, some selected websites, not all of them. Initially, you might not have the choices. You might just go ahead and settle down for the one which, which is giving you backlink. That's it. Makes sense. Any queries, any questions, any doubts? Are we all good so far? Can I get a quick confirmation? Anuj just says, there we can... We can see inbound linking. What is this? There, there we can see inbound linking. What is this? On moz.com. I'm just. Uh, yes, once we'll get across backlink, then we'll see if, if I'm getting across a backlink from a particular website. Uh, after it's been published, I'll go ahead and type in my website URL over here, and I'll be able to see that I've got a backlink from here. So let's say, uh, Anuja, what would have happened with Amazon? Amazon would have created backlinks from so many websites, right? Let's say they did create, a, they did get across a backlink from Tech Mimi and also from PC World today. After a week or a 10 days time, when they would have actually done backlink analysis for their own respective website, they would have seen that, yes, the backlink which they received from PC World and Tech Mimi, this is getting shown in the Moz backlink extractor tool is this your question was let me know if uh, i have understood your question uh, clearly and i've answered it if in case it was something else you can rephrase your question and you think it means inbound links and backlinks are same yes oh okay you're reading this inbound links and backlinks are same absolutely yes if you'll see this is what i have mentioned in my document off-page optimization has got a different names. It's also called backlink building, link building, creation of inbound links. So they all mean the same. Or it's also termed as getting votes for your website or gaining popularity or gaining word of mouth. Make sense? All right. Any other question, guys? Thanks, Saroja, for acknowledging. Anyone else with any other question? Feel free to put that across in the chat window. I know, guys, when you will be... Uh, Reading further more about it, you will you'll have more questions and you can ask me your questions at any given point of time. That's absolutely fine. All right, so can I get a quick confirmation from everyone? Are you guys doing good so far? Thanks, Sovik, for acknowledging uh, by saying yes. And Anud says, okay. Mukul says, yes. Pratik says, yes. Thank you so much for acknowledging. How about others? Ramnik says, yes. And Atanu says, okay. All right, thanks. So, okay, it's almost 11.20. Five. We can go ahead and uh, go for a small break and uh, a 15 minutes break, a small break, and then we'll t take it further from there. All right. So domain authority, page authority, I have told you this part, no follow tag is not used. Okay. Then after the break, we'll start with uh, the duplicate content part, which is again uh, a section of search engine optimization only all right so we'll, we'll take a 15 minutes break and then we'll meet after the break guys and we'll take it further from there all right so i'm putting myself on to mute
All right, so let's get started after the break, guys. Just trying to check if you can hear me. Right, can, can you hear me, guys? Just trying to check. All right, perfect. Now, the next thing, guys, with regards to search engine optimization, we need to be aware of the duplicate content issue. This is an issue which arises way too much uh, while optimizing across a website. Now, what is the definition of a duplicate content? Let's try to understand that first. The other name which is given across to duplicate content is plagiarism. All right. Now, there are two situations in which this uh, plagiarism issue arises. One is when somebody uh, copies content from our website and places it, or places it across on their website. All right. Now, this is absolutely a case of stealing across content. Either, it could be from either side. Either it could be that someone else has copied content from our website, which is uh, our content was unique. We had created it originally and someone stole it from our website. That is one. Or it could be from the other side that we go ahead and copy content from someone else's website and paste it on our website. From both the perspective, things are not appropriate. If they are not recommended. Now, we can just restrict ourselves. We can just stop ourselves from not doing this activity, but we do not have control on someone else, right? We cannot stop someone else. All what we can do is we can keep a close watch on uh, this copying content uh, you know, situation if someone else is doing, and we can uh, go ahead and take pre uh, precautions. We can go ahead and take certain actions through which we, uh, as uh, a website owner, do not get harmed. Usually what happens in a scenario when someone else is taking content from our website and pasting it on their own website, then also our website is being harmed from the SEO perspective. I'm taking an example. I'm, I'm repeating it. So there are two things I'm repeating. Okay. So no, I'm repeating. All right. So is everybody able to hear me? Let me just confirm can get a confirmation from everyone. Is everybody able to hear me? Mukul said yes. Can I get confirmation from others also? Because usually, all right, perfect. Thanks, Anuja, and thank you, uh, Atanu, for acknowledging that. And thanks, Pratik. Duplicate content is an issue which arises very oftenly in the search engine optimization industry. Now, if somebody is copying content from our website, okay, and then placing it across on their website, this is a duplicate content issue. In such kind of a scenario, both the websites, search engine ranking will get hurt, all right? Guys, don't try to read what's given on the document right now. Just have a look, just, just listen carefully to what I'm saying right now. There are two scenarios. Number one, when somebody is coming onto our website, someone else, let's say my website is Amazon. I'm taking example of Amazon again. I'm Amazon and I've got certain content on my website, whatever it may be. And uh, there's somebody who's, who has created his or her own e-commerce website. And this person is not that, uh, is, 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 bring, is being lazy and uh, is not, uh, you know, taking that extra effort to go ahead and create content of their own. And they're just coming on to different websites. Let's say they came onto Amazon website. They copied the content, which is there on the Amazon and they pasted it, pasted it right across on their website. Now in this scenario, what happens is, <coughs> excuse me, the search engine ranking for Amazon and for the website, which has copied the content, right? The search and ranking for both the websites will actually get hurt. Now your question, now you might come up with a question that why Amazon website search engine ranking also gets hurt. <coughs> Excuse me. Since Amazon hasn't really done anything bad, they're the original content creator and rather they're getting hurt unnecessarily since uh, someone else copied content. Well, just to let you know, despite of the fact that you are doing things in the right fashion and you're creating unique content for your website, still your website ranking can get hurt. When we say can get hurt, it means that the search engine ranking for your targeted keywords can go, go lower down. If they can go lower down, despite of the fact that you're doing everything correctly, it will go down in a scenario when someone else has copied content from your website. So you as a website owner, you have to make sure that's 
there is someone in your team maybe the search engine optimizer only who's responsible for keeping a close watch close eye on who all are copying content from a website there are certain tools through which the search engine optimizer for websites can actually keep a close watch on all those people who are copying content from your website so copyscape.com is the name of the is the name of a great tool all right so we you can go ahead and stop your video uh, it takes a lot of bandwidth so i'm uh, just requesting you so copyscape.com is an is the name of a website is the name of a tool basically through which you can keep a close watch you can keep a close watch on who all are copying content so let's say i'm amazon what i'll do i'll go ahead and open copyscape.com on regular intervals and make someone responsible for this and keep and and keep on doing a regular check up on copyscape whether so the moment i typed in amazon.in it's showing me that these are the name of the websites which have copied content so you know tech slip.net or it's uh, amazon.com which is their own website which is absolutely fine rahul gupta's linkedin profile all right he has copied content and then there is slideshare.net and so forth so all of these websites have actually copied so as you can see capwort.biz is a website which has also copied content from amazon now it's only amazon who would be knowing whether they have copied content or someone else has copied content copyscape.com is just showing those pages who have got content similar to what amazon.in has also got <coughs> now the team members excuse me <coughs> one second <laughs> now once the seo professional of amazon is doing this task of copying uh, sorry of of checking pages <coughs> excuse me of checking pages right which is uh, got same content as yours they have to go ahead and then take a step further and prevent this uh, situation from arising again and get this corrected also now how the amazon team will get this corrected and take precautions for future let me talk about that step number 1 after they have identified the name of the web pages which have copied the same content the amazon guy the amazon.in guy will actually go ahead and approach these websites right <coughs> excuse me by going on to the contactors page all right by going into the contactors page of these websites and letting them know that you got such and such wording same as which is available on my website which is there on so this particular text this is absolutely fine this is this is good this is okay you know it says 12% of the page has got content similar as to amazon 12% is fine anything more than 17 18% is a cause of worry now let me tell you the percentage also <laughs> excuse me it says 12% of the content of the page is same as content on amazon 12% is absolutely fine 17 17 18% is a alarming situation anything the more than 17 18% not 17 18% is 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 a situation when you should really take a take an action and what action would that be the amazon guy will go to the contact us page of this website we'll go ahead and send them across an email and in the email email and uh, they will call up and they will submit a form also and they'll request that please go ahead and delete this content or maybe change this content as it's uh, similar to as what it's appearing on our website and the amazon guy will also mention that since we came up with this content first we would want to ensure that you don't copy it out from our website if the other website order or uh, let's say the techslip.net is is a sound professional and goes ahead and changes it and acknowledges that email then it's good then the situation is under control but let's say this guy is rigid and doesn't do it you know he says that okay come what may i'm not going to change it it's my website it's my decision from wherever i take the content and so forth well this is uh, this is absolutely uh, a, a bad uh, i would say 
thing to do so nobody should do this but if somebody is doing it it might harm your website ranking also so it's your duty it's your duty so when i say your as in you are amazon in this example it's your duty to go ahead and uh, now take a step further and report it to google basically there is going to be a legal action which you will take against this website which is tech slip so as amazon you'll go ahead and report a legal complaint and the way you want to make a legal complaint guys is with the help of this website called dmca.com it stands for digital millennium copyright act all right i'm saying it again it's called digital millennium copyright act what you will do you'll go to this website and you can sign up and then go ahead and click on to start a takedown it's a takedown request which you are coming up with click on to start a takedown and here you will mention all the small little details in terms of what is the name of your website which is that which is that website which has copied content from yours what is the content all about which has been copied and so forth plus all your details your first name your last name your company name your email address your phone number and so forth and then you can go ahead and give across this. so there's going to be a certain money which they will charge for and that's 10 dollars a month so you can just go ahead and start with the 10 dollar investment pay them across and then they'll this website dmc will start investigating from their side about this content which is similar on two different websites now after this request has been submitted this takedown request has been submitted dmca will start looking into the database of google's indexed pages since google google or any other search engine they keep so dmca has got string a strong link with google all right dmca will actually look into the database of uh, google's indexed pages and will see that this content which has been mentioned over here it came on which web particular website page the first so the web page which got indexed the first will be there i mean it, it would be very much clear in the database of google dmca will identify which website came up with this content first and which website came up with this content second the website which came up with that content first and it was being indexed first will be considered to be the content creator the, and the second website whose content was being indexed later on will be considered to be the thief all right and the website who's being considered to be the thief that website will be penalized and penalized in a fashion that that the search engine ranking for that website will not come up it will rather get hurt and it will go further down and the website which was which has created the content and uh, which hasn't done anything wrong their search engine ranking is going to be on the top hope that makes sense let me know if in case there is any query any concern and if you guys have understood it is everybody good guys with this let me know if in case you have a question are you are you all good with the first scenario of duplicate content you understood it thank you anuja and thank you sovik thank you mukul and thank you anuja for acknowledging can i get confirmation from prateek ramnik anuj are you good with the explanation about duplicate content all right seems they are not there on the desk for maybe so i'm moving further now the other scenario <coughs> excuse me the other scenario guys of duplicate content is when you have same content on two different web pages of your website of your website or right, if you got same content pratanu says is dmc a private platform yes it's a private platform but they have got uh, that they have got synergies with google all right so if you can uh, let uh, turn on your uh, your your recording part I, i can see it's not on and pratik says the website which took the content is penalized in terms of drop in the seo ranking you are absolutely correct pratik and that will be there for how many duration for life long 
that's going to be a lifelong thing. All right. Now that's uh, that's a great uh, question. I believe everybody has understood this. Now the second thing, guys, so copying is a no-no. Oh yes, absolutely, it is a no-no. Now what hap what happens, guys, in many instances, unwillingly, or you can say, uh, it's a it's not a deliberate effort, deliberate thing, but without getting noticed. In certain scenarios, the content which you have on one of the web page of your website is same as the content on a different web page of your same website. So an example is like maybe certain content on your home page is also there on one of your blog pages. Sometimes it happens guys. All right. You didn't try to do this deliberately, but uh, it happened. Maybe one of the uh, pages on your blog page has got same content as the content on your uh, one of your product and services pages that also happens now how do you really get to know whether two different web pages of your same website two different web pages of your same website have, has got same content it's again copyscape.com which can tell you this so if you know if amazon.in uh, .in's home page has got content which is same as uh, amazon.in's blog page or maybe the contact this page. I'm just giving you an example. If that would be there, then Copyscape is actually going to inform on that part also. If you will get to know through Copyscape that there is same content in two different web pages of your, of your website only, then you can go ahead and resolve that issue with uh, through various ways. And I'm going to talk about that. So I say as in some kind of quote of something. Well. All right, that's a great thing which you have come up over here, which you have come up with, Sovik. If there is a specific quote which you have put in across in, uh, you know, inverted commas, begin inverted commas, close and so forth, that is absolutely okay. Quotes are something which uh, search engines do not take a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, they do, do not take that so seriously. They do not go ahead and penalize you on, uh, on you know, if, on, on uh, in scenarios when there is same content on when there is same content with regards to a what do you call that quote part and so forth. No, I mean it as an example. Oh yes, as an example we can take that. But just to let you know that uh, content which is same on two different web pages, content which is same on two different web pages as in quotes. All right. And so it says, even if it's not a code, can content be copied and given credit? Yes, absolutely. A content which has been copied and it's been copied after taking permission, that can happen provided the credit has been given. Then also it's allowed. These things also happen, absolutely. The definition of duplicate content is basically all about copying content from someone's website, placing it on your website without taking permission. If you're taking permission from someone, then you will go ahead and provide credits. That is absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine. Today, if I'm Amazon and I go on to, what do you say? Uh, or let's say it's uh, techmimi.com. Techmimi.com has got this content or this entire content. And this entire content, which is there, that has been copied word by word. This has been copied word by word from Amazon itself. All right. But this has been done after taking permission, after per taking permission from Amazon and Amazon has given permission. And Tech Mimi is acknowledging it by giving across a link in the footer section by saying credits given to let's say tech crunch or amazon or tech whatever and so forth right this is a backlink see credits when you give across credits that also uh, creates across a backlink also right that creates a backlink also so this is one great way of getting backlinks also that you go ahead and uh, you know take content and give credits back and so forth so they are all interconnected to each other somewhere or the other if I just specifically talk about the 
the duplicate content issue in uh, the duplicate content issue arises only when content has been taken from a different website and posted on your website when you have not taken permission from that website owner and uh, you are not given credits if you have taken permission and that particular person has give, accepted it you just go ahead and give credits back that's it you have understood it perfect so i am repeating the same thing tech mimi and amazon i'm sorry pratik uh, can you explain further what was the question like so if amazon has so whosoever copies content from whosoever but the credit has been given across then that's not a case of duplicate content but if the credits are not being given permission is not being taken then it's a uh, scenario of copying content pratik says technimi has taken the permission from amazon for content for for yes i mean if the permission has been taken and backlink credits has been given then it's not a case of copying content then it's absolutely fine makes sense all right so anuj says so if in code part so if in code part you mention credit given then it will be as a copied content no see it's not in the code part in the uh, bottom basically you try to give across credits in the uh, footer section most of the times or maybe in the uh, i mean somewhere on the page somewhere on the page you actually do that either it could be on the uh, top or it could be on the bottom or right, so let me just go ahead and see for tech me me so just give me a second give me one second one second So let me see. So this content is not being copied from somewhere or the other. All right. usually people do take across content from somewhere or the other so in tech me me which is tech crunch basically i would have to look for some other uh, example let, let me just see uh can i think of i'm just trying to think of a website which takes content from somewhere or the other all right uh, i can think of a website Let me just see if I can get it over here. So there are quite a many websites which you know put down uh, content, put post across content on their website, where they give across credit to the website from where they have taken it. all right pratik says some common words are there which are there in every website so it, it's increasing the chance of content copy see uh, like i did mention pratik 
15 16 17 person up till that it's absolutely fine right it's absolutely fine and these common words are uh, they they lie underneath this particular percentage so you know this privacy policy or terms and conditions or shipping policy these kind of words these kind of content are i uh, you know are common amongst various different websites and that's why uh, google understands that part even you will find with various e-commerce website content certain content which is is, is uh, similar on various websites so let's say you know iphone 6 uh, as a product its product description which would be there on flipkart on ebay on uh, shop clues on amazon it might be same on all the e-commerce websites most of them not just for one of the product but for various products maybe a mobile phone maybe a printer maybe a laptop maybe an apparel now they usually go in and take across the product description for all the pro uh, for most of the products it's there on multiple on on, on multiple e-commerce website and in that scenario the duplicate content issue doesn't really arise across because product description is not not so long in e-commerce websites right so 15 17 percent is absolutely fine but if it's coming out to be more than that then it makes sense to go ahead and uh, change the content part rephrase the content part that's what all right so i was just trying to show you if a particular website has given credit to some other website if it has copied from copied it from somewhere else and and it's difficult to actually find it like this i don't see credits being given over here usually people give across credits in the middle or right, so as you can say the credit for the image is being given across right you see that anuja so credit for this image is being given people usually have started giving credits for the images also from where they have taken so Now, why I've taken search engine watch because search engine watch also takes a lot of data from Google's blog and so forth. All right. And they do mention in the credits section, source reference and credits are the same. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So if that's being done, then the, uh, then there is no, uh, content duplication issue. Anu just says it's okay. We can search it later. Perfect. Sure. All right, so now let's say if somebody is doing it deliberately, all right, okay, we have understood that deliberate part also. Now let's say in an indeliberate way, the content on one of the web page of your website is same as the content on this another web page on your website. So let's say the about us page and the contact us page has got same content. What you can do is after getting to know from copyscape.com, you can go ahead and either change the content that's number one to really get rid of it. Or maybe what you can do is you can put across a tag, a tag guys, which is called no uh, index tag. Let me just tell you, it's called a meta robots, no index tag. Let me just show you what exactly it is. Now in the source code of every web page, guys, we know that there is a title tag where there is a meta keywords tab, right? There is also a meta robots tab. If you remember, I have given you a uh, explanation about the robots.txt file. I did mention that robots.txt file is a file which is used for giving instruction to search engines with regards to uh, what all web pages should be crawled and indexed and what all different web pages should not be crawled and indexed, right? We understood that, that part. So that was one way of instructing across search engines about the web pages which should not be crawled and indexed the other way of restricting across a web page for not to be crawled and indexed guys is by changing across this uh, particular tab uh, this particular uh, tag which is called meta robots tag all right meta name is equal to robots content index and follow so let's say one of your blog page content and your let's say uh, content on any other product page of your website is same. Now you find that the content on both the web pages is same and they are, they both are equally important. They both are equally important. You can't really go ahead and uh, 
do anything about it you want both the web pages to have same content but since it's a duplicate content which is arising across what you can do is you can select across any one specific page which you want to showcase across to the search engines and rank it across and the other web page you don't want search engine to consider at all for ranking the web page which you want to consider across for ranking all right the web page which you want to consider across for ranking you will not do any changes to that but the page which you want to hide from the search engines you will go ahead and uh, put across uh, put, you know make across a change sorry in the meta robots tag for that page so let's say the blog page and the uh, internal web page of your website they both have same content you want blog page not to be considered by search engine for search engine uh, for, for the ranking purposes you'll just go to the source code of that page and in the meta robots tag which will be there by default by default it will show index and follow you will change that meta robots index follow tag to meta robots no index instead of index you will type in no index let me go to the source code of a specific web page all right let's say this is a web page for this i'm just going to the source code and let's see the meta robots tag for this page it could be for any website for any particular websites page so here is the source code and the meta robots tag all right i'm just trying to see if do they have the meta robots tag or i say unfortunately they do do not have this all right i'm just going to go ahead and check with the flipkart so let's take another example so some of the websites they don't place it across but it's not a good thing to do it should be there i'm clicking on the view page source view page source for the flipkart page and right up over here all right so it says meta robots content equal to this is strange that should not so that n o o so i don't want to show you this one open description pretty strange these websites don't have the meta robots tag embedded across so let's say i'm going on to okay let's do a fresh search and then try to do it snapdeal is one of the great websites which they have everything in place so i'm i'm taking that example that website is an example they do everything perfectly so i'm going ahead and opening across snapdeals one of the page and showing it up on there i'm going on to the source code for this page and So you know the websites for which we were not able to find out the meta robots. That's not the right thing to do. We should have that in place. I'm just doing a command F. All right, you can see it right up over here. The meta robots tag it's showing index and follow. The only thing which needs to be done over here is instead of index, it would be no index. Now this is to be done across in a scenario when you have. two different web pages on your website with same content and out of those two you decide that one of the web page you will like to be ignored by search engines 
when search engine will ignore one of the web page one of the web page out of those two which have this had the same content search engine will ultimately put across uh, emphasis on the one which has been uh, which has not been touched upon which does have meta robots tag as index and follow and the web page for which we have change the tag from index and follow to no index follow that particular page will not be considered for ranking it will not rank in the search engine results out of the two only one web page will rank in the search engine result and it's upon us which one do we really want to rank upon we have to make a decision is it going to be the page number 1 or page number 2 which we want to be ranked which we want that to be ranked upon make sense let me know so these are the two scenarios when the duplicate content issue arises when you have two different websites with same content and when you have two different web pages of your same website and this is how can we put it on our website meta robots all right so let me just see if, uh, the way i can talk about this just so in this case usually uh, you know we take across help of a developer to put that across let me see there should be a way to actually get it done for the uh ourselves without help of a developer not understood the meta tag pratik uh, the meta robots tag is very similar to what the robots.txt did for us do you remember what robots.txt did for us all right so what uh, robots.txt was there for it was there for the purpose of giving instruction to search engine on in terms of which all web pages to be indexed and crawl and which all web pages not to be indexed and crawl we understood in the robots.txt that uh, all those web pages which we do not want search engines to crawl and index only those needs to be entered in the robots.txt generator and by default all the other web pages will be crawled and indexed now the example which i am talking about over here in duplicate content is the scenario when two different web pages of our website have got same content so let's say iphone 6 16 gb page of snapdeal this particular page and one of the blog page of snapdeal has got same content i'm just taking an example all right both the pages iphone 6 product page and one of the blog page of snapdeal have also has got the same content <coughs> excuse me now to get rid of this situation either we can go ahead now you know duplicate content on two different web pages of our website is also harmful the scenario one of duplicate content we have understood that you know two different web websites with same content is harmful and how do we really get rid of that by you know putting across a legal request and so forth that was understood in the second scenario when you have two different web pages on your website with same content that is also harmful what you really need to do is you have to decide that which web page out of these two you want to give across importance whether it's going to be the internal page this one or the product page or the page which is uh, the blog page which has the same content let's say you have you have uh, made a decision that you want to give across uh, emphasis to the blog page you want that page to be ranked upon in the search engines and this particular product page you're not bothered about you want to hide this from search engine you don't want search engine to rank this particular page so what you will do you will go to the source code of this page and every particular page source code has got this code has has got this tag called meta robots tag for this web page which you do not want to be crawled and indexed and you don't want to give emphasis to it you will go to the meta robots tag for this web page and by default the meta robots tag for every particular page is like this this is the content of that every particular web page for every particular web page the meta robots tag by default is going to be index and follow all you will have to do is instead of index you will type no index so two letters n n o before index will be typed in which is no index and your job will be done then the duplicate content issue within the same website with two different web pages will not arise search engine will only now consider the other page which is the blog page and this particular product page 
with the same content will not at all be considered yes so there won't be any space between no and index it would be no index like this now how do we really change that i'm just going to go ahead and see that and uh, so it says if a website doesn't have the meta robot thing we can still do it with the help of yes the answer is yes if the website doesn't have the robots meta robots tag then you can uh, change the robots.txt either you go ahead and use the robots.txt file or you use the meta robots tag they both do the same thing they both do the same thing so you'll go ahead and make changes to the robots.txt file and enter the pages which you want do not want to be crawled indexed all right perfect so i believe everybody is able to understand that so let me just go ahead and see how can we do this but with, with the help of our developer just give me a second i'll just go ahead and open across uh, give me one quick second i'm just going to check So it says I didn't understand how does this help in duplication? It helps in removing the duplication process. Search engine will out of the two pages which have the same content. Now search engine will only consider one web page, right? Now in the dictionary, in the eyes of search engine, only one web page is going to be there. The other web page doesn't really hold, uh, doesn't stand, doesn't really exist. So big. So in my example, I told you. one of the product page which is the iphone 6 page of snapdeal and the second page of snapdeal which is the blog page they have same content which is a duplicate content issue if i go ahead and decide that out of these two i want only one web page to be ranked upon i will have that page remain as it is and the second page which i don't want to be ranked upon i'll go ahead and put across no index for that web page i will uh i will like to inform the search engine not to be indexed across the other page if the other page will not be indexed so so what will happen automatically there would be only one web page for the search engine to be considered right make sense Pradeep, if some companies did not have meta meta robots tag, then you can use across the robots dot txt. You'll use across the robots dot txt option. Right? Just give me one second. so the other question is meta tags are compulsory to be created or it's optional well it's optional but it's necessary to be created across for the better optimization of your website ramnik says in case of duplication how would source file will be decide which page to follow then source file will decide it's actually up us who will decide which web page we want to be crawled and indexed and which web page we do not want to be crawled and indexed the one which we do not want to be crawled and indexed we will go to the source code of that page which we do not want to crawl and index and we will put across a no index either we do that ramni or we can go to robots.txt and we put across uh, that web page we will uh, in the ro in the robots.txt generator if you remember which we saw it today as well in the robots.txt generator we will mention the url of the page which we do not want to be crawled and indexed that's it then in that case we don't have to really play around with the source code of that particular page all right and so it says okay so that's like if two pages have same content on same website yes absolutely right all right so is there any question which i have missed on which 
uh, okay guys if in case i missed certain question please feel free to you know uh, send that across again in the chat window so that i can view it again and answer that respectively i'm going back to my all right so here is my wordpress i'm just trying to see if there is a tag a plugin basically not sure meta robots through which i can change the meta robots for all the web pages i'm just trying to see All right, let me see if there's a particular page which I want to be not to be crawled and indexed. And uh, see, through robots.txt, we have understood. I'm just trying to see the meta robots tag if I can restrict it from here. Uh, just give me one second. All right, see in the meta robots, in the Yoast SEO itself, you do have an option of index and no index. Do you get to see that? I'm, I'm showing you once again, guys. So I'm on a specific web page. What we have understood so far in the Yoast SEO, we actually understood this part, the snippet section, the focus keyword and so forth, right? We were able to put in across a title, meta description, and so forth in the focus keyword. Now that was for the content optimization. If you'll go further down and you'll click onto the advanced tab, you'll get an option of meta robots index. You'll just go ahead and put across. Uh, so default is index for every web page. As you can see, default for every web page is going to be index. You want to get this no index, you'll just select this option and it would be done. Make sense, guys? The meta robots is going to be changed like this. You got that perfect. All right, so make sense. Let me just go ahead and uh, see what else is remaining. Robots.txt is being done. All right, the next thing is going to be Google Webmaster. I'll, I'll show you the Google Webmaster thing and uh, after Google Webmaster, there's certain more tools which I'm going to show you tomorrow. All right, so can you take a quick break and then after the break, uh, we'll show you Google Webmaster today. And tomorrow, when I'm going to be showing you across the other tools, we'll be done with the search engine optimization tomorrow. And next week, we'll start with the paid part. Pratik says, after checking on copy scape, if a company found that a particular website has copied the content, what if a company directly complains to DMC without sending the mail to the website owner first requesting to change the content? See, if the other website says that we are DMCA compliant and you feel that they have copied content from you, still uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, very confidently approach them and let them know that this content which they have on their website has been taken from your website. You are the original content creator. If you are pretty much sure and confident, Pratik, that you are the one who is the owner of this content, which the other website has posted right up there, then you would have to go ahead and uh, you would have to go ahead and uh, you know let the other website owner know that it's your content. If they say, no, it's there, then you can go for a, a sort of a legal fight if you're pretty much confident because Google will have in, it, in their records, the facts will speak for itself. Google will have in their records that who's the original content creator. And you're saying in this case, SEO ranking will impact both companies, both the companies. 
initially it will impact both the companies pratik but once the legal complaint has been put in across and the person who has been found out to be the culprit the person who has been able, who has been found out as a culprit uh, at that later on in that stage uh the culprit will be uh, penalized his website will not rank higher it's the other website which has created that content will only get the benefit right initially both the websites will uh, get the pinch but later on once the google once the legal request has been submitted and google has found out who's the thief then after that process the thief will actually get the pinch and the original content creator will be good in that scenario all right so we we're going to take a 20 minutes break and then after the break we'll take it further from there and this is are we not going to learn about social bookmarking directory submission and other part and blog article press release all right let me tell you this getting across backlinks from all of these websites like directory social bookmarking and all that is absolutely a strict no these days with regards to off page optimization but many web, many organizations do still follow that approach of getting backlinks this is anuja a pure uh, way of generating unnatural backlinks for yourself and getting backlinks from unrelated websites approaching various different websites of yeah you know, within the same business is the right approach but trading across backlinks from all these websites is uh, a strict no from my side if you still want me to cover that up i can i can show that to you i know 75 to 80% of the internet marketing agencies they still follow that same approach but it's only followed uh, i mean it's only beneficial for for a certain period of time as we move further in in the up uh, in future uh none of the activities will be carried out because they are still right now also affecting uh negatively they they are they're putting across a negative impact on the ranking for major websites they might give you a push in the beginning i can i can ask a request to other good website yes getting across backing some good website is the only right thing to do and plus having great content on your website that's the only good thing to done across all right so you're saying how we can create backlinks for website means we can learn about backlinks but how we can ask all right so it's just a plain simple email uh, anuja which needs to be sent across to these other website owners so let's say i give you an example of uh, flipkart what flipkart will do it will go ahead and do a backlink analysis for amazon so amazon was getting across backlinks from so many websites like from tech meme from pc magazine and so forth so flipkart gets to know that its competitor is getting backlinks from let's say these 10000 different websites so flipkart will start sending out emails to all these 10000 websites i know the percentage is very less the amount the kind of response which uh, usually you get across for your emailers which will have a request for getting across backlink is very less out of 10000 emails you probably might get a reply for 400 500 or maybe 100 emailers where only 100 people would be interested to give you a backlink but that's the process that's the right approach it's a long uh, in order to be in order to stay in the market in order to stay uh, there in the search and then results for a longer period of time this is the only approach if you will create un backlinks for yourself in an unnatural way by going to social bookmarking websites and bookmarking your website by yourself by going ahead and uh, submitting your websites to directories or article submission sites they they will give you a push to your uh, you know your website maybe for 6 months 8 months or a year but later on it will start depleting because mm-hmm. google is totally mm-hmm. against google is totally against these unnatural way of building links if you will go ahead and uh, you know look for blog post which google has posted around these and videos which google has created around these unnatural backlink creation you will find everywhere they have mentioned that it's totally against uh, their search engine policies and they don't uh, 
they don't encourage this all these websites which are ranking on the top what they have done is uh all they have done is they have just got backlinks in the natural manner by by contacting the great website owners only and not creating backlinks from all these various different social bookmarking article submission and uh, press releases website and so forth there that is a strict no but if you still want i can so we just need to send general emailers yes so in order to approach these people you have to send across general emailers a request emailer saying that you know my website is in such and such thing and uh, it would be a great opportunity to really go and connect with each other and help each other i can give you content and uh, if you can give me a backlink in return these kind of things or people uh, or maybe your email can contain that we are let's say an e-commerce website we are ready to offer 10% to 20% freebie discounts uh, or maybe certain freebies if you will consider uh, promoting across our website with the help of a backlink being uh, posted on your website you know certain kind of motivation needs to be given across to these website owners then only they'll reply back either you give them certain amount of money a financial transaction takes place or you go ahead and give them across freebies or discounts or maybe you go ahead and uh, give them content most of the websites are looking for content so give them content and they they would be more than happy to give you a backlink in return or i know you need to mention our aspect can you show me an example right uh, simply I'll, i'll i'll look for that we can even google that across just a second you can again uh, refer to search in the general and moz they are they great so let me just give you the so i i use their overall terminologies only so pradeep say it's paid getting a backlink from other websites it's both it can be paid it could be a sort of a barter also pradeep it could be a uh, barter in the sense like you're giving a giving content and they're giving you backlink in return or you're giving across freebies to them and they're giving you backlink in return or you're giving across discounts and they're giving you backlink in return all right so something like this anuja it says hey i recently came across on such and such website yes for that you have to send them across an email huh? and uh, here are the various different email suggestions you can go with this you can uh, refer to all of these the quite a many i know the overall response rate for to such kind of emailers are pretty less but that's the right approach this is a painful approach this is a time taking approach but that's the best approach if you still want me to go ahead and uh, talk about uh, you know the directory submission and so forth i'll try to actually take a session on uh, these uh, old school off page optimization techniques next week i can i can still take that sure i'll i'll uh, so not this week next saturday i'll definitely do that all right so we'll go for a uh 20 minutes break guys and then after the break we'll take it further from there so i'll just go ahead and put myself on to mute and then uh, i'm going to go ahead and show you google webmaster which i which we configured in the morning today all right google webmaster which is one of the product all right so putting myself on to mute
or I, I or I was speaking and I didn't realize that I was still on the mute part. I hope you guys can hear me, right? Just trying to check. All right, perfect. So the last thing for today, guys, which I want to show you is Google Webmaster, Google Search Console. I've already given you a brief about it. And uh, the way it's been configured with the help of Yoast SEO, that also I had shown you, right? Similarly, you can do that for your website. Once it's been configured, these are the tabs which you get to see in Google Search Console for your website. Now, I don't want to show you this uh, dashboard for a new website. This is for a new website, basically. I'm showing you for an old website, a website for which Search Console has been configured for quite some time. The reason which, why I'm saying this is because at least some data should be there in Google Webmaster to showcase and let you know what exactly it does. Now, once your website starts getting traffic, you will have data in Google Webmaster also. And the data which you can see right up over here it's basically to do with the search analytics to begin with. In the dashboard, I am repeating again, the steps which I have used for configuring Google Search Console, it's the same which we did during uh, the beginning of the session today. Do make sure that you connect across your Google Search Console guys in the same fashion. If in case you will find any problem, you will always have the access to the recording. And still, if you'll have any issue, you can anytime connect with me. Once your website gets configured and it gets across certain data, I'm letting you know what exactly Search Console helps us with. The primary objective of Search Console is to have communication with Google guys. If Google wants to connect with you, you, who are you? You are the website owners. If Google wants to connect with you and give across uh, any intimation to you, uh, the, the major scenarios when Google intimates or connect across with the website owners is when the website is either using bad uh, SEO practices or, you know, it's copying content also, or maybe it has been infected with virus or the vi website has been hacked across by someone. In these kind of scenarios, Google will send across a message in the search console within the message section. Google will send across that your website, let's say, has been infected with virus, it's been hacked, or it's using across infringing content, it's using bad practices of SEO, then you have to take that very seriously and get those things corrected. All right, that's number one. That's the overall objective of having Search Console configured. Number two, if I'll go back to dashboard again, over here from the Technical perspective, there is some issue with your, uh, what do you say, server, it will show up right up over here. Okay, so as, now, as of now, it says only four server errors and three access denied and so forth. Plus the uh, other thing, server connectivity, domain name server, which is DNS, the robots.txt file, they all three are good. All right, they all are showing in green color. If there is some problem with any of these three, you would have to get that fixed up. Now, how would you fix this up? DNS or server connectivity is something where you have to connect with your server uh, people only directly. Okay, you have to let them know that their server is not getting connected or the domain name server is not perfect. And let's say the robots.txt is not getting fetched in, then you have to make sure that the robots.txt plugin has been installed and uh, the uh, you know the entire uh, what do you say the code or the the language which needs to be inserted across in the robots.txt that has been inserted. So make sure all these are in perfect position. And then the search analytics, in, which is the second most, which is the second section in dashboard, that's a great feature which Google Search Console gives the website owners. You can go ahead and click onto this and you can get data related to the traffic which your website is receiving particularly from the organic side guys, from the SEO perspective. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on to, so here, here is the, the moment I clicked on to search analytics, this particular tab came in. I can select last 90 days, all right? That's a maximum date range. That's a maximum time limit, which I can select. For the last 90 days, this is the amount of traffic which my website has been receiving, these many clicks, all right? For every single day, it's been represented. And uh, 
as of now this is the status like not just the number of clicks or the number of times my website has appeared the number of time my website has appeared is called impressions okay it is letting me know google search console is giving me data about the number of times my website has appeared in the search results and the number of time it has been clicked for respective keywords now for these keywords let's say sharepoint out of the box features for this particular keyword 117 times the website has appeared in the last 90 days and 27 times it has got a click <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> excuse me all right or let's say sharepoint ootb features 87 times it has been it has appeared and 11 times it has got clicks if i'll click further on this i can get further more information about this particular search query that for every single day how many times the uh, website has appeared and how many clicks has it received now this is not in the paid section this is in the unpaid the search engine optimization only all right now once we get across the report from the keywords perspective that these many keywords are bringing us this much amount of traffic that is a great resource that's a good uh, information for the search engine optimizer to really uh, play across its campaign what i mean to say is that if my website is ranking across for the keywords for the same keywords for which i'm trying to rank it across i'll go ahead and strengthen my website uh, for those specific keywords further right so uh, these are the same set of keywords for which my team is actually optimizing the website for and uh, the client is ha also happy about it guys all right so as you can see if i'll go further down it's uh, how many keywords are there how many so these are search queries basically so these are the search queries for which the website has been ranking and has appeared across now for all these different uh, keywords the website has appeared in the search ranking somewhere or the other but haven't received a click anyhow the clicks one are right up over here so this is one great database guys which we do receive the other section which i would like to so now there are multiple things which can be done on google search console i'm giving you information about the most important ones the other thing is links to your site you can go ahead and click over here and this particular tab will give you information about the backlinks the same thing guys which the moz tool was giving us the moz tool was giving us the backlink similarly this search console tool is also giving us the details about the backlinks which our website which uh, the website which is in question is receiving across and from which all websites they are getting backlink so there are 901 backlinks which my client's website is receiving from pinterest.com 83 backlinks from timesjob.com 77 backlinks from youtube and so forth the moment i go ahead and click on to more i'll get the entire list i'm getting across the entire list and so forth all right i can go ahead and download this and so forth now the next thing guys is the next tab which i would like to show you is internal links internal links means one page of the website is giving across a link to some other web page so contact us page of our website has got link from 636 different web pages guys of my website all right that's the case so that these are the things which are uh, used or right, so guys i'm sorry my back my max laptop's battery is also depleting and i'm uh, yeah and i don't have a charger right now it's uh, i'm not able to find that across so what i can do i can we can think this further guys google webmaster thing tomorrow we'll continue with this tomorrow and then uh, uh, we'll so we'll start with recap and we'll continue with google webmaster and I'll, i'll show you various other tools i'll show you various other tools which are uh, used across in the search engine optimization industry hope that makes sense all right so thanks everyone for joining in and uh, we'll be continuing tomorrow same time 10 o'clock and uh
I hope you guys have recorded the session at your end, but still, I'm going to pass on the recording to Nitin and he'll send it across to you and uh, we'll take it further from there, guys. All right. Sure. So we, we, I can uh, go ahead and uh, so, uh, guys, I have a session. So Saturdays and Sundays is a difficult, uh, are difficult days for me to go ahead and uh, connect with you after the sessions and so forth. Monday to Fridays, we can do that. Right. And uh, you can connect with me. You're very much connected with me on WhatsApp, right? You're very much connected with me on WhatsApp through the group. Right. So you can send me across your request, your questions, your queries right up over there. And we'll try my level best to answer them on uh, ASAP basis. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being part of the session today. And I hope you have uh, this session is recorded automatically. Yes, Pratik. All right. Okay, sure, uh, Ranik, I'll go ahead and uh, give you the cPanel details uh, during the weekdays, all right? So I have to join in another session and we'll, uh, we'll help each one of you during uh, Monday to Friday, okay? Tomorrow we'll meet same time and we'll uh, continue our discussion further, guys. Take care then, too. all right, take care. Thanks, everyone. Take care, bye-bye.